Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the webinar today. Uh, let's give uh, a minute for everybody to join in, and then we will start. So kindly be with us for another minute. I guess we'll start and people keep on joining in. So uh, good morning again, everybody, and welcome today uh, to the session. Uh, today's topic is uh, apprenticeship, and it is one of uh, uh, very pertinent topics that is there right now for all of us to look into and see how we can, uh, uh, you know, sort of be compliant as well as take full advantage of our uh, uh, act and uh, uh, the Sector Skill Council at NASCOM, uh, the IT, ITS Sector Skill Council at NASCOM has been actively working uh, under uh, uh, this domain and has been helping uh, numerous organizations uh, understand what the act is and how they can make, uh, take full advantage of this opportunity. So today we have Girish with us and uh, Girish is going to be taking us through for uh, the whole journey of the act and what are the important factors in the act and how we can fully utilize it. Uh, so I would uh, welcome Girish uh, to the webinar today. Uh, and I also welcome Celestine, who is also there from NASCOM uh, on the webinar today. Uh, so Girish, over to you. Please take it over. And uh, at the end of it, uh, we will have some questions. So we will help uh, Devansh and we will help uh, sort of help you collate those questions and answer uh, over to you. Great. So, uh, good morning, everybody, and hope I'm audible there. Uh, just say yes or everything fine there. Yes, audible. Yes. Great, great, good. So, as uh, uh, you know, uh, Amit uh, uh, said, apprenticeship is uh, a but apprenticeship is the one uh, uh, you know. Uh, law which is pertinent to every organization which is existing and registered in the ecosystem there and hence as i'm sharing my screen hope my screen is also visible there now hello uh yes uh, yeah okay so you know it is pertinent that every organization should uh, abide by this law and uh, let's uh, take it over. Uh, you will go further as we go further. You will understand what it is all about and uh, how we can align with that and uh, how, without causing any um, uh, disruption to our current uh, business, how we can uh, adopt that and so on and so forth is all what we will be discussing today. So, you know, uh, just to give a perspective of what it is uh, and what is the ecosystem and how it is uh, being run in India today, apprenticeship historically has been. <coughs> there since 1961 as a law and uh, initially it was under ministry of human resource and uh, uh, development mhrd and uh, later now that same ministry has been called as ministry of education and also since 2014 we have ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship also uh, uh, you know uh, running or uh, more, uh, operating this apprenticeship uh, uh, law in the country so the you know two ministries there are of course as we go further we will tell uh, about the different uh, two different schemes also but at the outset to start with apprenticeship is a law and which every organization should uh, abide by any organization which is having more than 30 or equal to 30 or more than 30 people as headcount is legally mandated to abide by this law engage apprentices and also any organization and it since it brings a lot of uh, uh, financial benefits to the organization, any organization, particularly with the startups in the beginning, initial area, days and all, 
if any organization is having more than four people as their headcount, they will be eligible for uh, engaging the apprentices, but it is not legally mandatory for them. But however, any organization which reaches the threshold of minimum 30 or more, they need to abide by this uh, legal compliance. And what is it all about? And you know, what it says is that any organization which is having more than 30, equal to 30 or more than 30 people as headcount need to engage minimum 2.5% of their headcount as number of apprentices. And anybody, I mean, now it, we are talking of apprentice, everybody will be having this question. And maybe some of you, any of uh, the HR folks may be knowing about it. Some of the uh, uh, non-HR folks may not be knowing it. An apprentice is, uh, engaging apprentices is an obligation of an organization which is registered in India uh, to use its infrastructure and technical expertise to impart, impart these skills to the entry level workforce who are qualified but not skilled. So, and that is an obligation what government expects from the established companies to skill the entry level workforce, preparing them for the future work. That is a, in principle, what the law is all about. So, hence they said that, you know, minimum 2.5% of your headcount need to be engaged as apprentices at any given point of time in a financial year. So that is a must minimum threshold is 2.5. And some companies, you know, since of course we will discuss about the financial incentives and all, and uh, they can go up to 15% also to the maximum of their total headcount. They can engage those many number of apprentices. And also the apprentices, you know, that by definition of the, uh, from the law itself is that they are, they are trainees. They are not employees of an organization where they are being engaged. So hence, all these labor laws and all will not apply to them. And in the same thing, and, uh, you know, this ESI, EPF are not applicable to apprentices. That is a, an indirect benefit to the organization. Because as you know, you know, organizations also need to contribute towards ESI and EPF. So that is not necessary, definitely not necessary for uh, apprentices. So. And also there is another benefit like CSR benefit. We'll discuss a little bit more in detail about later on that, that, you know, and as I said, to recap it, an apprentice is a trainee. He or she is not an employee of the organization, but it is the obligation of the established organization to skill the entry level workforce who are qualified, but not skilled to prepare them for the future work for the industry. So moving forward, and just you know, in this, uh, just to make it a little bit more clear, there are two ministries. Again, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Since 2014, they have been uh, into existence, and they are running apprenticeship uh, called a scheme called NAPS. And we'll talk about the details of that. And also under Ministry of Education, there is another scheme called NAPS. So since 61, this law has been there. And it is as mandatory. We are stressing on the legal mandatoriness of the of whole of this because you know there are a lot of uh, uh, you know churn that is happening in the ecosystem, and hence we wanted all our member companies to be on the right side of the law before it is too late. And that is the reason why I'm stressing more and more on the legal implications and legal aspects of the uh, of apprenticeship. So uh, and it is as mandatory as any company registered company filing income tax. And the only thing is that till now, government has been very uh, lenient in implementing this and they are trusting the industry. And even today, that is the situation. So they are trusting the industry to comply with the law and support the uh, government. So moving forward, since 2014, there are a host of changes that have been made in the apprenticeship law, the guidelines, the ecosystem to make it very, very friendly, user friendly or industry friendly. You know, the moment where some people who have been practicing apprenticeship since beginning, they would know that how difficult it was those in those days to run to different departments, filing some papers, returns and things like that. So all that has been taken away. You know, a lot of flexibility has been added. And earlier, you know, the uh, authorities used to visit the organization and say that, okay, you have to engage certain amount of apprentices. It was their discretion. So now it is not so, uh, you know, organizations can engage anything between 2.5 to 15%. Minimum should be 2.5 is what the government is saying. This is a change that has been brought in the law itself. Earlier, it was not there. 
So from ITIT's perspective, we have already have 14 curricula, which, which are industry aligned, which are approved. And if you select any one of them, which is more suitable to your business, you, this is just like a plug and play kind of situation. And uh, you can just uh, start with that. And of course, uh, we will be there to support you and guide you how to go about that. And also we have a, a list coming up in the next slides. And apart from that, there are 75 more approved curricula, but uh, uh, curricula approved and aligned with NCVT, but not approved for apprenticeship, but the, which can be used for uh, apprenticeship with a uh, little bit of, uh, you know, uh, cherry picking of the uh, nozzles and things like that. We will discuss that later when it come, when we come there. So, you know, and many times the question is asked, oh, you know what, apprenticeship is only for manufacturing sector and, you know, uh, why it is not applicable to services sector or rather it is not applicable to services sector is, is a perception it is wrong. The Actually, since inception, since 1961, every sector, there is nowhere it is said that it is only for manufacturing. But in those days, as every all of you would understand and agree with me, that, you know, those days the economy was driven by manufacturing sector so all of this, even the law also was circled centered around the keeping the manufacturing sector at the core and but whereas to all the good work that our industry it it industry has done since last three four decades which is contributing more than eight percent to the gdp obviously all the even it it is also has come into the focus because it is a big employer as a sector and also contributor at, uh, to the national kitty so obviously, and just to highlight, to raise out that misconception in anybody's mind, if they have that apprenticeship law is not applicable to IT, ITS and services sector, it is wrong. It is applicable to every sector, even, inclu even including the um, uh, unorganized sectors like, you know, domestic helps, uh, uh, civil construct construction workers, and uh, security people who are, you know, providing security services, even such sectors are also uh, coming under the Apprenticeship um, Act. Any organization, again, the rule is any organization registered, which is having more than 30, 30 or more than that, are, uh, you know, uh, abide, should abide by this law. Then, you know, uh, it is made very, very simple. As I was saying, I'm highlighting on these flexibilities and the changes that have been brought in so that, you know, I want to create or give the confidence to all the people who are participating here that this is very easy, very simple. And you will know why, why I'm saying that going forward, you will see that. And another change that has come in, as I said in the beginning, that, you know, there is a lot of uh, paperwork running to different government offices and pillar to post and things like that. All that has been erased either be it under Ministry of Education or under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, everything is on a portal. Online portal, every transaction can be executed through online portal, including the incentive that is, uh, if you or any organization is claiming, the, the uh, reimbursement of that incentive directly into your bank account. Everything can be is being done online. So absolutely sitting on your desk, you can execute, adopt, execute, and implement apprenticeship in your organization. So convenient. And one more thing, what, as, as I said, you know, I touched upon this, uh, the fact that government is trusting the industry. What has happened is after 2014, when they were uh, implementing apprenticeship in a renewed avatar, they promulgated sector skill council CEOs as the joint apprenticeship advisors, which is a kind of a government uh, body and a government uh, responsible post. It is a government service. And the CEO of ITITS SSC is appointed as a joint apprenticeship advisor. And by virtue of this, this person or uh, this uh, person would be responsible. That is what the government is saying, responsible for implementing apprenticeship in their respective sectors, uh, sector. So to, in the nutshell, ITITS SSC CEO, which is Mr. K uh, Ms. Kirti Seth, is uh, the joint apprenticeship advisor for ITITS sector, and she has the full authority of implementing apprenticeship in this sector. So, which I, which means arbitration, any uh, you know promulgation of any new act and uh, guidelines and things like that, strict implementation of this law and so on and so forth. So, all that is there. Now, another important thing, you know. Uh, 
earlier, as far as the penal uh, provisions was concerned, the defaulting company CEO was to be imprisoned for about six months, max of six months. That has been removed. And now the changed law says that every missed after the, after say, for example, joint apprenticeship advisor uh, sends you a show, uh, notice and then after sending that notice within three months and uh, organization still not uh, complying with the law, then for in such situation for the after the first three months, a fine of 500 rupees per missed apprenticeship opportunity would be charged as a fine. And even after that, even after the first show cause notice after three months and then still after three months, it is not being met, then the fine becomes double for the uh, you know, missed uh, opportunity of apprenticeship per month. So, you know, all in all, uh, though I would say imprisonment has been changed only as a, a, a financial penalty, but I don't think we being the good corporate citizen of this industry, we would be, even want to think of that as an option. Uh, though we, we, I know that we do have deep pockets, but I don't think we should be thinking that as an option against our national uh, obligation, right, of uh, skilling India, and uh, contributing towards killing India and uh, they are, you know, leveraging that demographic dividend rather than making it a liability and turning it and turning it into an asset. So, so let us not, I mean, uh, I don't really personally don't want to go into the more details of this penalty and things like that. But having said that, uh, since it is so flexible and everybody, it is so easy and uh, and already uh, we have onboarded in the last four years more than 2500 companies and majority of them were ITITS and more majority of them were from non -IT, ITITS sector also but here are some companies who have been listed like all the big names to give you more confidence like google wns wipro techmahindra science and you know you the list goes on i can't list all the 2500 companies here but they all have opted and adopted and implemented apprenticeship. Okay, so now this is what I think would be a more important slide for everybody after setting in the context. Everybody would be thinking in their minds as to how do I implement this? What do I do next? Is it aligned to my business? Is it, you know, the training uh, uh, curricula, how well it is tailored to my requirement and so on and so forth. So, you know, as I said in the beginning, to answer these questions, as I said in the beginning, that apprenticeship is being run by Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and Ministry of Education, which was the 12 MHRD, Ministry of Human Resources and Development. Under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, we have this uh, scheme called NAPS, National Apprenticeship Promotional Scheme. And under Ministry of Education, we have this scheme called NATS, National Apprenticeship Training Scheme. So anybody would ask, what is the difference? Simply put, I think it is already there uh, in the chart that is being seen there. Uh, you know, simply put, typically, historically, for uh, under NAT, uh, under MHRD for the NATS program, the training period was one year. It is fixed. And since it was all take, uh, centered around manufacturing sector, they used to take only, it was uh, even the scheme also was tailored only for engineering graduates and diploma engineers to be taken as apprentices, freshers taken as apprentices in the, in the organizations. But off late, there are some changes made to that also. I think if I'm not uh, wrong, graduates uh, of other streams, uh, non-STEM uh, graduates also have been, are being taken uh, under NATS. And under NAPS, which is the recent uh, 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 scheme which has come in into existence since 2016, there the whole idea was that anyway with the NATS, graduate engineers and diploma engineers are being, being taken care of and they are uh, there is a fixed training for them for, of one year, but there is a whole lot of people who are, you know, BAs, BSCs, BCOMs, BWOCs, 10th and 12th pass and even some school dropouts and all. How about that? That mass was much bigger. So government had in mind uh, uh, to leverage this mass and uh, skill them for better, uh, giving them better life and all. And for that purpose, the NAS, uh, NAPS scheme came into existence. So under this, what happens is that there are, uh, you know, any organization can pick 
the uh, as i said the 14 curricula particularly i am now i am talking of it its sector pick a curricula which is aligned tailored and suited for it its sector we'll see the list also and which are you know just if you pick any one of them say for example crm voice or domestic data entry operator or software developer these are the kind of curricula what we have and which range for the du uh, duration which is somewhere in the range of 6 to 9 months and 12 months which typically aligns with the fresher induction training in any organization so it is aligned with that and also you know uh, uh, there are uh, optional customized uh, uh nsk of aligned the uh, courses optional trades and uh, again there are curricula for that also and in case if you feel that okay i don't uh, none of these curricula which are there which are approved are suitable for me but i want to use my own curricula for training these freshers but still be compliant with the law that also is possible so only thing compromise that you may have to do there is that you won't be able to uh avail the financial assistance uh, or, or uh, incentive that is being uh, given by the government but still you can be compliant and in most of the cases that also could be an option for many of our it its companies of course when it comes to that we will uh, discuss the details of all these uh, these things and uh, uh, you know so what i say mean to say is that aligned with your business requirements you can engage apprentices in any of these five buckets that we have put in here and how to make it happen i think that is not the discussion point here right now in uh, this is i am just letting you know about the possibilities and later actual execution and the business model and all we'll discuss that with the interested company another thing i want to highlight here is that there is a, as i said there is a government incentive of 1500 rupees per candidate per month as a stipend incentive so the law says that for any graduate be it a be a be a ba bsc bcom bwoc any of these graduates if are being freshers are being engaged as apprentices then they need to be paid a minimum of 9000 rupees as a stipend and out of that 9000 that is 9000 per month and out of that 9000 1500 per candidate per month would be reimbursed by the government to the uh, company or nowadays there is this uh, discussion of uh, transferring that uh, incentive money directly to the candidates account through dbt which is direct beneficiary transfer which probably you may be knowing you know which is a prevalent uh, mechanism of transferring this government incentive to all the end users directly through their bank accounts so that process is there so you know in the nutshell if you look at uh, this thing i mean the whole proposal is that the the law has been made very simple it has become very flexible easy to operate and it is aligned with your uh, uh, fresher hiring and training uh, in terms of duration and curricula and uh, you know timing and things like that and there is no restriction as to what should be the selection criteria of the candidates you have you can adopt the same process what you are adopting right now in your organization like it may be in terms of interviews written tests and whatever you know for freshers what you may be doing depending on how you are doing that in your organization the same set of candidates selected through your process can be brought under the uh, you know this uh, framework of apprenticeship so my point is if you are hiring freshers if you are training them say minimum 6 9 months or 12 months or whatever for before push uh, pushing them into value creation processes that itself is apprenticeship why not bring those people under apprenticeship framework you are compliant without uh, compromising anything on your business side no compromise on the quality of the candidates that you are selecting and even nowadays the your training part portion also has been made very very simple it is all on the job training just the way you know you are attaching some three four people to a mentor in your off you know environment a manager or a supervisor he mentors them trains them for whatever period and uses the uh, using the training curricula training methodology of your defined by your organization and at the end of it they are uh, being uh, evaluated based on a simple mark sheet which uh, the, there is a standard format for that and there we go bingo you are done that's apprenticeship in its legalized framework we will and believe believe me that you know 
ITITS SSC is always there to support each and every organization to build this model, adopt this model, and implement this model right till the last mile. That is my promise from and from NASCOM side, from the entire ITITS uh, apprenticeship team also. So, uh, you know, uh, again, I want to say that this is so easy and simple. You, any organization, just to cap up the discussion up till now, is that every organization, sizable organization, is having a you know, taking freshers in their organization. They are training them and then then pushing them into value creation process. And there is a duration, which is some organization may be doing three months, but unfortunately three months would not qualify for apprenticeship. It has to be minimum six months. So six months, nine months, 12 months, if you are doing that, then it is whatever you are doing should can be brought under the framework of apprenticeship. Bingo, you are compliant. We will help you do that. Okay. <clears throat> now, now talking about some financial benefits per se. Anybody who's working in HR would appreciate and would understand the stable, right? What is done here for simplicity, just I want to highlight here is that against hiring a regular employee, if a NAPS apprentice, just for the sake of calculation I put in here, NAPS apprentice is engaged, considering them as graduates, a set of 100 people we have considered for all of these calculations. There are different cost hits any HR function would incur for engaging the regular employees and also thus against the same cost heads, what is the cost that would be incurred is also put in there for the same number, same qualification, right? So if we calculate all these things at the end of it, you would see that there is a clear 30% benefit by engaging apprentices rather than engaging regular uh, uh, engaging freshers as regular employees right day one this is one benefit 30 percent clear clear straight away and that too we have considered you know the the minimum stipend being paid as nine thousand rupees here but whereas we know for sure that there are organizations who are paying more than that for freshers right so at the basic level 30 percent benefit right and Another important, I would say, tacit benefit is that, as I said, an apprentice is not an employee of the organization, right? And uh, uh, that means you can, uh, you know, if uh, somebody is not performing well, within a day's notice, you can say that, boss, you are not performing well. Of course, there should be a process, you know, initial uh, notices have to be given and so on and so forth enough opportunity to be given for improvement also even then if somebody is not performing you can say goodbye to them that means you are by engaging apprentices you would not be engaging any liabilities unlike what happens in uh, permanent employment okay so, tenure of apprenticeship you would have that opportunity to evaluate the candidates and find out whether they are really good or not good so at the end of it, and also another important aspect is that as per law, it is not mandatory on any organization that after successful completion of apprenticeship, successful or non-successful completion of apprenticeship, no, it, even a single employee need not be engaged or absorbed as a permanent employee of the organization. You are an organization's obligation ends once the apprenticeship training ends. That's it, period. But however, to align with the business, what we have been doing, our companies do, is that they select a candidate of their choice aligned with their business and skill requirement. They train them, bring them through apprenticeship framework. And then whichever, whoever is performing well, they absorb them in the organization and whoever is not performing well or not suitable, or even maybe at that point of time, when they need to be absorbed, there is the business itself is something like that. It doesn't allow you to engage these apprentices as permanent employees in your organization. There is no obligation at all to hire them. You can let them go. Right? So these are the you know other benefits. And on top of it, this table here has considered all that ESI benefits, CPF benefits, and so on and so forth. Right? Before we go to this slide, I would want to say here one more thing is that we say that 
and a uh, minimum of 2.5% of total headcount of an organization need to be engaged as apprentices. We also say that maximum an organization can go up to 15% all across India. And if you are located in Maharashtra, if you are lucky there and located in Maharashtra, you can engage up to 25%. That's a different thing. So across India, maximum number of apprentices can be engaged is 15% of your headcount. He said minimum is 2.5. So that additional 12.5, if you engage, right, can be the entire cost of that additional 12.5. That is anything above 2.5%, which is a minimum threshold, whole of that cost of engaging apprentices, including the payment of stipend, can be expensed out of your CSR funds if you are paying CSR. Very, very important. Very, very important. You know, I uh, so here is an opportunity for an organization to train its future workforce using their own CSR funds. What an opportunity. There are many organizations which are using this, huh? by the way. So that is what I wanted to highlight here. Uh, then, you know, these are the uh, uh, job roles which we have. I said there are 14 job roles. Uh, which are suitable for the entry-level workforce in IT, ITS, and services industry. So uh, anyway, we would be sharing this deck with you. There we have listed the duration also, minimum duration for apprenticeship being six months. We have tailored them something like six months, nine months, and 12 months. So uh, these are the 14 job roles, which are mostly used by our IT, ITS industry. We also said that, you know, if you don't want as one bucket number four, going back to that previous slide, bucket number four, if you have your own curricula uh, training and which is again, a minimum is six months there, you are training them, then you can use the same curricula, but only thing you will have to forego the financial assistance, a stipend assistance of 1,500 rupees. That's all it is. So, you know, and if any organization is uh, interested in uh, using this and uh, how to use which curricula, which is aligned and all, of course, we will uh, let you know that. And also, I would like to say here is that, you know, you have these websites here uh, for NAPS, apprenticeshipindia.gov.in, www, that is that. And uh, the, here it is, mhrdnats.gov.in. These links, if you follow, you will have all the information that you need uh, for apprenticeship regarding these two schemes. So uh, then, you know, moving on, as I said, uh, under apprenticeship in, we do have designated trades also under maps. These are further details. And, uh, you know, if we can, I think we should be crossing these uh, things when we come there, uh, this, uh, you know, and also under Ministry of HRD, uh, these are the designated trades which, can, which you can use. But the latest information you would uh, get if you go to these websites as to what all curricula are there, what is the process, what are the guidelines and the law and uh, even CSR benefit, I mean, uh, um, notification from the government. Everything is available on the portal, everything. And if you still don't uh, get what you want, please call us, mail us, contact us. We are there to support you and guide you anytime. Okay. So summing it up, I think we discussed this up till now, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the highlights of what benefits and so on and so forth. Fixed stipend levels, minimum ones, and hence, you know, easy, no PFI, ESI, uh, PF and ESI uh, compulsion for the organizations to pay. And even if you are, another thing from the business alignment perspective, if you are engaging interns, many people have this question, whether internship can be apprenticeship. I would say with the qualifier, if the internship duration is about six months, then yes, you can bring them under this scheme itself provided you are paying them the minimum stipend okay that is also possible and uh, currently the, the, obviously if uh, you know you want to engage apprentices no need to make any changes to your hr recruitment process of freshness the same process can be used for engaging apprentices also and that is what many of the big companies are doing okay not to repeat again and again everything but uh, you know we have in the why i am seeing this with so much of confidence is because in the last four years, we have actually helped more than 2,500 companies engage about one lakh plus apprentices. So uh, we are very, very confident. And we, every day in and out, we work with uh, the NSDC, the ministries, and hence, you know, at many places, uh, if you get stuck 
we can bring in support from directly from the ministry also if it is if it really requires that way, that way okay so be confident and you are not going to get into any kind of problem by engaging apprentices that is another assurance because see everything what you are doing otherwise also in your organization the same thing is being done under this framework so nothing to lose as such well these are the companies who already have listed i can't list out as i said you know all the you know uh, emblems of all these companies 2500 but some of them i have put in here and these are the next set of details in terms of process of uh, registering on the portal as a company as a candidate and selection and so on and so forth what requirements what documents everything is listed and why i put these slides though we may not be discussing it in detail is that to give you confidence that every process every step of the process has been thought through and treaded through multiple times so that we have that uh, best practices available right now what can be done and what cannot be done and what should not be done right and that is the confidence what i want to induce in you all that you if you are, want to adopt apprenticeship then you are, you we please be assured of our good support at any point of time experienced right and this is uh, the again this this is an assessment process at the end of the apprenticeship we run this assessment and uh, again there also we have a process and uh, you know in our internal portal we call it as insdms a company has to register uh, itself and, uh, and you know, declare the number of candidates the company wants to assess make the payment and so on and so forth and finally the certificate will be given uh, to the candidate after the assess, successful completion of the assessment they all the processes are there existing and uh, nothing new need to be uh, discovered or evolved okay this is a just template of a certificate and the march card and your company's logo can also can be there and you know any apprentice even if you are not engaging that apprentice in your organization if he wants to attach this certificate to his cv your emblem would be there that's the brand and value and branding opportunity also what having right so finally i think we all discussed this i don't want to repeat uh, you know in the interest of time again we have the benefits why apprenticeship should be uh, adopted and uh, we i would say to be on the safer side right side of the law being a good corporate citizen i think without disrupting anything from your business side it can be done very very flexible and suitable to your business and nascom and itits ssc is there with you to support you at every step then why not be compliant rather than being ignorant okay with that i pause and ready to take any questions hello hello am i audible there yeah girish yes you are audible happy to take questions gentlemen and ladies uh so lot of questions have come in the chat and uh, parallelly uh, you know they have been answered by celestine as well so i would request if uh, uh, celestine any pertinent question you feel must be answered for the larger audience if somebody has missed in the chat uh, then maybe girish can answer that sure uh, i most of them have been answered so there's a question regarding the tax liability if we pay 40000 per month stipend uh so for that particular question i have just uh, you know asked nsdc though they're going to get back to me in a minute or two girishi do you have any take on that what was the question are we uh, okay does the organization have to deduct tax if the stipend is 40000 per month see uh, that if the uh, if they are paying 40000 tax actually the deduction of tax would become kind of mandatory if the person is uh, falling within the tax bracket and then as per the, the same tax laws would be applicable depending on whether the person is uh, you know going to fall in the tax minimum tax bracket or not is the question which uh, the finance team and legal team need to answer if that is so then it becomes obligatory for any organization to cut the tax at the source itself tds 
So for that, I've just asked NSDC as well. They will be yeah. confirming. We will reconfirm this from NSDC. Yes. Yeah. So the next question, what about MediClaim of apprentice? Is it compulsory or exempt? See, MediClaim, as I said, you know, apprenticeship is not an organization. I mean, uh, an employee of the organization. But many peer organizations, what we are suggesting for the same question is that instead of making them part of your MediClaim policy, buy a group insurance, group medical insurance for them. Because anyway, as an organization, you would be... Uh, uh, wanting to provide a safety net in the organization also against any accidents and things like that. So a group medical insurance is the best way to go forward. Next question, please. I'm just going through this. Okay, what if we hire more than 15% of headcount? So I will answer that question. Uh, the portal itself will not allow you to engage more than 15% uh, of the headcount because once you may enter the headcount, that is frozen. So automatically the portal calculates only 15%. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Okay, so, so there's a question. I suspect that fresh engineering graduates that we hire will be willing to come as apprenticeship. What is the experience of companies following NAPS? See that actually, you know what? When you are hiring freshers from the college or boot camps or um, campus interviews and all, at that point of time, because you want to be legally compliant, if that is the only uh, uh, route you are engaging up and freshers, then I think you can issue this. Some companies are doing, or rather, many companies are doing, that they inform the candidates yes, you are going to be engaged as permanent employees after successful completion of. Uh, apprenticeship but to start with your engagement with the organization will become i uh, mean will be uh, as an apprentice but at the same time we are issuing a letter that after successful completion will be absorbed in the organization so depend based on the brand value of the organization and the future with the and also uh, the with the vision of the future prospects uh, in many cases or in almost all cases candidates agree with that This is more of an HR uh, kind of how to handle the situation kind of a situation. Yeah. Okay. So next question is, uh, someone is, uh, uh, Sonika has asked, uh, she mm -hmm. met someone last week who says they can claim 50% of 9,000. So she wants to know about that. Yeah. This is under the scheme NATS. And uh, uh, under the scheme NATS, the guideline says that 50% of the stipend will be reimbursed. But uh, since, you know, as uh, SSC, IT8 is SSC, we are not directly dealing with NATS, hence I did not make a mention. But I think uh, under NATS, they, uh, that is again only for the graduates apprentices, uh, right? So engineering apprentice graduates and the BA, BSc, BCOMs, if they are taking, there the incentive is 50%. Yes. The next question, could you please suggest if LLP is covered? Is uh, limited liability organization is that what somebody is asking llp means that only i would guess Anika, yes i think so yeah it is also as and if your headcount is more than 30 yes 30 or more so there's another question is mediclaim uh, mandatory i think we answered that next is uh, okay about dbt sir so people want to know if it is a reimbursement, it will be directly transferred to the apprentice. Yeah. So, you know, what, what would happen is if you are engaging apprentices to make things more easy, the stipend would be paid to uh, the candidates, the company portion of the stipend. Suppose if you are deciding 9,000 is the stipend you are going to pay, then the company portion would be uh, 7,500. That amount you can pay directly to the candidates in their bank account using uh, NAS, uh, NSDCs or NAPS portal payment gateway, it is available there. So that whatever amount you have paid commensurate with the attendance, that is already seen by uh, uh, NSDC finance. And then, you know, accordingly, the rest of the amount, 1,500 rupees, would be transferred to the uh, candidate's account directly through DBT by NSDC. So this is very simple and easy. Did I answer your question?
next question sir if a company is only recruiting mcas is it necessary to register and hire graduates yes any graduate even a phd also if that person is not having any past working experience can be engaged as an apprentice particularly these curricula they mention what is the minimum qualification there is no limit for the maximum qualification only the criteria is that a person who is being engaged as apprentice should not be having any past working experience little bit of you know philosophy i mean principle behind that i would like to explain is that the whole principle of apprenticeship is to skill an unskilled person though he or she is qualified educationally qualified but without having any skills to make them job worthy so this uh, qualified people could be even a 10th pass 8th pass or 12th pass or fail or whatever that is but to skill them apprenticeship is what is the scheme is all about hope i answered that okay so next question is uh, ketaki sharma's question they are hiring interns via nap so it's i assume it is apprentices so they are hiring apprentices via nap status under non naps and they do not take reimbursement mm -hmm. so her two question is is the approach okay so see there should not be any problem actually government would be very happy and if you do that in big numbers they will uh, uh, you know appreciate you and uh, you know facilitate you also felicitate you also uh for doing that because you are not using tax payers money but still meeting the national obligation why not yes very much welcome and the second part of the question is they have not, they do not get the option of uploading attendance or scores for apprentices uh is this meeting the compliance sorry what is that i didn't get it they haven't been able to upload attendance or scores because the system doesn't allow them to is this meeting the compliance see that the, at the end of the day this is i think this is an operational issue we need to get in touch with nstc uh, uh, in the portal why it is not we have to get that done because unless attendance is proven uh, compliance you know for a say 6 month long period if there is no attendance there and how can one be called as a uh, compliant Iraqi, what we can do is we can connect offline and you can huh, make it yeah, i would suggest that this is an operational question so let us connect offline we should be able to help them out and uh, if any apprentice breaches the contract mid year any are there any government guidelines Bre breaches breaches or uh, ends abruptly ends see somehow. the thing is at the end of the day uh, if an apprentice within the during the period of apprenticeship uh, resigns and goes and opts for another job then you know actually government would think that somebody has vacated a seat for another unskilled person to get skilled through apprenticeship hope you are getting my point so if somebody is willingly resigning and going away and for better opportunities then i think there is no stopping for them and if some you know many people ask this is there any bond and we can make it compulsory and all there is no bond there cannot be a bond if somebody during the period of apprenticeship wants to leave he or she can leave and i think you have to backfill them if you are falling short of 2.5 next question is what if we do not get any one from the portal as per our criteria see from the portal if you are not getting the candidates i i said that you know you can have you may be having your own process of selecting candidates those can be brought in as apprentices no problem is it applicable for all branch offices of company under one pan number or we can register for head office only see there is this uh, uh, i mean if you are operating in more than uh, four or more than four states then you can register at only uh, one location uh, uh, only any, any location of your preference but if you are operating in three three or less than three then you and if all these entities are separately uh, registered as a separate business entities then you have to engage apprentices in all these centers three different uh, locations however in case of if you are registered in four states and working in uh, four states and uh, all these companies are working you can engage apprentices only uh, in um, one location only that is not a problem so next question um under chartered accountant or company secretary course candidates one second 
Okay. Uh, candidates have to undergo training as a part of their curriculum. Whether this training is to be considered as work experience if you want to appoint qualified fresher CA or CS as an apprentice. See, again, I said, even you are saying, you know, uh, identifying that as qualified fresh CA, right? So if they are being trained in an organization, the same training curricula can be used for apprenticeship also. They can be, I mean, uh, uh, you can exchange a contract with this fresh uh, CAs as a, a, an apprenticeship contract and use the same curricula. But only thing is that since this curricula is not approved by NSDC for apprenticeship, you may not get the financial assistance. I think we've covered most of, so someone, okay, Renu has asked how to decide whether we should go for NATS or NATS. See, that is what I said. It is depending on the curricula that is available there. It is dependent on the duration of training that you want to train. Yeah. Are the main two criteria. Then I would say these two are the main criteria. Business alignment is the main criteria. <laughs> Uh, Vice, uh, so about leave policy, as I have mentioned, it's uh, the organization leave policy the, is applicable for the candidate as well. Absolutely. Anything else? Anything? I think it's the same questions. Okay. From where can we access it? Is it there on the portal? Okay, so on the NAPS portal, everything is available, all documents, all questions. You have the NAPS guidelines. There you have FAQs, you can download and you can also go through that. Um, next. Okay, sir, there's a question. How to respond to the notice received for not abiding till now? <laughs> okay, you know what? My suggestion would be once you have received uh, uh, the uh, show cause notice, if in, unfortunately, if you have, then best thing would be to quickly decide which scheme is more suitable for your business. And if you're already having some freshers in your organization, quickly register on the uh, you know, portal, which you choose depending on the uh, scheme that you select and start registering the candidates. And uh, you know, once you register the candidates, you can have a list of uh, apprentices engaged in your organization. You can reply to that notice that, okay, these are the organization, these are the candidates whom you have engaged as apprentices from this date onwards. So we are compliant, end of the story. As a company policy, we have a contract for freshers. So if we hire apprentice, what if they exit before completion of one year training? We said that, right? We answered that. Yes. If in uh, so Sonika wants if, to know. Just one sec. Hmm. If in between any candidates leave, if you, you cannot stop them. And even in many cases also, freshers direct employment also, and in their case of being in the induction training, there is no notice period, I assume so, because that, that used to be, that is, that, that's how it used to be in, my, in, in many of the organizations where I have worked. So, uh, in, so even in apprentices case, there is no notice period if they are leaving and many cases, sometimes it happens that, you know, people are absconding, so we can't do anything about it. But at the same time, we being a good corporate citizen, if such uh, absconding or res resignations are there, if at, that makes you fall below the threshold of 2.5%, you have to, you better quickly refill that. Uh, Sonika, yes, you can go for NATS and NAPS together as well uh, to suit your business requirements. There's no restrictions on that. Uh, so there's, uh, Ravi has a question. Can we have a mandatory clause that the candidate needs to join the company after the successful apprentice uh, completion? Because the company puts a lot of effort in grooming the candidate. As I said, there is no bond, there is no compulsion. In the apprenticeship contract, you will not be able to put this clause. But as I again said in the, during the course of discussion that if the, the brand value of the organization, the remuneration package and the future growth keeps the candidates clung to the organization. So that is the only thing that you can do. And once you engage them as permanent employees, then you know your process and uh, policies can take over. Okay, so I said, so, uh, so everyone I'm leaving our email ID Celestine at nascom.in and Girish at nascom.in. If you have any more queries other than the chat, we please feel free to write to us. And uh, next, I think we've got a couple of more questions. 
Is it mandatory to make the payment to apprenticeship stipend via the portal only, or can we pay them directly in their bank accounts? See, my suggestion is that you use the portal, then it will be less, less of hassles in terms of uh, filing in the details of who are all the candidates whom you paid stipend, reconciling them as to what was your portion, what is the direct beneficiary, beneficiary transfer that need to be paid to the candidates and all. Uh, those will be, you know, in the later parts of this execution, that will become really a little bit of cumbersome. So from that perspective, I'm saying that, you know, in the beginning itself, if you start using uh, the NAPS payment gateway for stipend payment, it would make your future life very, very simple and easy. Uh, next question, sir. What if the job listed in the apprenticeship uh, portal is not covered under our business profile? How to comply with law? I said that two ways to do that. In the interim, if the job roles or the curricula that are defined and approved already by NSDC, if that none of them are suitable, you have to create your own curricula. And until that time to get in, and if you are wanting to avail the financial assistance, because at the end of the day, assistance will come only for the approved curricula. So you have to prepare your curricula in the same standard format that NSDC has prescribed, get it approved, and then you will become eligible for availing the financial assistance. That is a bit of a long-term strategy. In the meantime, to become compliant, whatever curricula you have for training, that can be submitted in a standard format, which we have. We can support you with that format. Just submit it to NSDC and start engaging apprentices. You are, you are compliant, but you want to get the financial assistance until the curricula is approved by NSDC. Hope I answered your question. So next question is, we have freshers in our company and we are training them as well, but they are our employees. Can we consider them under the NAPS, under the scheme? See, if they are already your permanent employees, then you know you have to manage it from the HR perspective. And uh, because to consider them as apprentices, there has to be a contract which has to be signed between the candidate and the organization and uploaded on the portal. And uh, so at any point, point of time, one single point of time, and a, a person cannot have two employments, right? So from that perspective, your original employment letter has becomes null and void. How you would manage that situation is a thing that you need to think and resolve. But and the going forward, when you're engaging freshers, what I would suggest is, as I said earlier also, is that you start them with the apprenticeship contract and issue them a parallel letter, not an employment letter, parallel letter, or maybe a commitment letter that after successful completion, you would be engaged as permanent employees in our organization, depending on whatever grade, salary, and so on and so forth. You can mention that. Uh, but there can't be two employment letters for the same candidate for the same time. Hope I answered that question. Okay. So, Anshul, your question regarding the reimbursement, we can connect separately on this and we can take you through the whole the claim and reimbursement process. And next question. Well, uh, I, I think, you know, I, we are just... We are pressed for time. Uh, yeah, so... So I think, you know, there would be, uh, just you may say, just one sec, if I may say, there would be many questions and uh, and we are there to, and we almost 99%, we will have answers to your questions. And, uh, you know, we will also be circulating this deck, what I use for this presentation. I mean, uh, during this discussion, we will circulate to all of them so that you have a better set of information available for reference in your organization. And after that also, you definitely, you know, we, many people would be having questions. Please reach out to us. We'll be there to support you. And in fact, we are there to support you till you successfully implement apprenticeship in your organization. Over to you, Amit. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Girish. And thank you, Celestine, for uh, coordinating. Uh, so quite an insightful session. And I think a lot of questions uh, uh, mean that uh, people had you know, valued getting out of this session. So thank you so much for that, Girish. Uh, as uh, uh, it has been shared in the chat as well, there are email IDs available uh, uh, where you can post your questions, post this session as well. So please feel free to write in if you have any questions, as Girish said, and we'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, uh, on that note, I would like to also thank all the participants who are here today. Uh, 
uh, you were quite uh, engaged and uh, had a lot of questions to ask. So uh, thank you for being a participative audience. Uh, we will look forward to uh, you know having such engaging sessions in the future as well. So on that note, thank you everybody for the session today and look forward to the future ones. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.